Welcome to the NetApp VM Granular Management Demo, or VVOLs, on Cluster Data on Tap. You're probably familiar with the vSphere architecture. vCenter server manages ESXi servers that consume storage from data on tap using NFS, iSCSI, FC, and FCOE. This is managed by the Virtual Storage Console, or VSC. VSC communicates with vCenter using vSphere APIs and communicates with Cluster Data on tap using NetApp APIs known as Zappies. VVOLs adds another component, the vendor provider, or VP. The VP communicates with vCenter server using VASA, or VMware APIs for storage awareness, and with cluster data on tap, also using Zappies. The administrator uses the vSphere web client logged into the vCenter server to manage the entire environment. The Virtual Storage Console plugin is accessible from the home page of the vSphere web client. Under Storage Systems, you can see all of the NetApp clusters that are available to VSC that have been registered and authenticated. In this lab, we have one running version 8.2.1. Under configuration is where we register and unregister the VASA vendor provider. And you can see here that the vendor provider is already registered. Under the VASA provider menu is where we manage the capability profiles for NetApp storage. By default, you have gold, silver, and bronze. And in this lab, we've added VVOL NFS and VVOL iSCSI. So let's go provision a VVOL data store. Under inventory trees, we select hosts and clusters. And you can provision the data store at the, at the data center, cluster, or host level. We use the NetApp wizard as it completes the task for both the VMware and NetApp sites. First, we give it a name and select a protocol. Next, we pick a matching storage capability profile. Pick the cluster and storage virtual machine. And then we pick the volumes to become part of that data store. You can pick one or several. There's also an option to create additional volumes at this time. And now we have our Vivo. Let's go look more closely. We select the data stores menu, click our data store, And now looking at protocol endpoints, we can see the NFS mounts that are used internally to access all NFS vVols. Under related objects, we can see the backing storage. You can see each flex ball, there's only one in this example, and its size and other properties, as well as the number of vVols in the data store. So now let's create a virtual machine. Select one of the servers, select the new VM menu, Give it a name, pick a host for it to run on, and then we select storage. Notice here that the VM storage policy is grayed out. There are two things we have to do to make that available. So we'll slide the new VM wizard over to the work in progress area, and then go to the home screen and select VM storage policies. And here we're going to create a new one. Click the new VM storage policy icon. We give it a name, and for rules, we pick the NetApp VP under the rules from vendor-specific capabilities. We have the option of picking an existing profile, which is a NetApp SCP, or creating one out of individual capabilities. The next screen shows us the storage is compatible with the storage capability profile that we just picked. The second one-time task that needs to be done to enable VM storage policies is to enable them under policies and profiles, or here in the new virtual machine wizard, you can actually jump into the part where you can configure that and enable that feature on the ESX servers. Click the link, click each server, and click enable.
And again, this is a one-time task. Now we can pick our VM storage policy. And that gives us the list of data stores that are compatible and incompatible with a storage policy. So let's go to Hosts and Clusters under Inventory Trees. And there's our new VM. Let's jump over to Data Stores and we'll look closely at the data store that we created before. And you can see under the backing storage that there are two VVOLs on that data store now. One for the virtual disk and one for the VM configuration files. So let's see what happens when we power on the virtual machine. Go back and look at the data store again, and we see that slide to the right, and the number of VVOLs is now three. That third VVOL is the VSwap file for the memory swap of the VM. The next step is to take a snapshot of the VM. You right click the VM, click Take Snapshot, then we give it a name, and we uncheck Snapshot the Virtual Machine's Memory. Back on the Data Stores tab, we select our Data Store, Backing Storage, move the bar to the right, and we can see the number of VVOLs is now four. That extra VVOL is a copy of the virtual disk. Now we'll go into the Snapshot Manager, select the Snapshot, and then delete it. This is a much faster, more efficient process than previous implementations because no data has to be moved from Delta files back into the original VMDK. So now let's clone the VM. Give the new VM a name. Pick a compute resource. And select storage. If we pick the same VM storage policy, Acme NFS, the same data store will be compliant which enables it to stay within the same NetApp Flexball, which allows us to use NetApp Flex clone to create the clone of the VM. Once the clone is complete, you see we have more VVOLs.